The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Peter Johnson at wheatpeatrealagriculture.com and once again at Ontario Diagnostic Days in Ridgetown, Ontario, University of Guelph with Joanna Fallings back as the cereal specialist with the Ministry of Agriculture and Food. So glad to have you back, Joanna. Man, it has been a tough year in the wheat game. We have seen just about everything. And recently, I mean, we're close to harvest now, but the latest or the, the last thing that everybody talked about was, oh my gosh, the fungicide killed my wheat crop. Joanna, what went on? Well, we sprayed our T3 fungicide like we normally do. We're trying to protect against Fusarium head blight and we very quickly started to see some interesting symptoms. We're seeing leaf tip burn and folks are thinking, man, my fungicide, my surfactant, I've totally burned my wheat crop. I've got huge yield impacts here. What is it gonna mean for my wheat crop? What am I gonna do? Do I need to stop using my fungicides at T3? <laughs> and so when, when you looked at those symptoms, Joanna, uh, was there anything that kind of jumped out at you in terms of uh, particular areas, uh, different uh, varieties? Yeah. Like, like what, as you put that story together, because there's always a story, Absolutely. what did you learn? So it was very interesting. In most fields, we would start to see that leaf tip necrosis, and it would be across the whole field. But the really, really interesting part as we started to dig into some of this, it was also in unsprayed fields. So fields that didn't get a T3 fungicide were seeing this leaf tip necrosis. We also started to realize we had a lot of similarities in varieties. So certain varieties were exhibiting the symptomology much worse than others. And again, even in fields that didn't have a T3 fungicide application. So we're looking at genetics as one thing, yep. and did we did we make any link with the genetics? Is there something there that, that in the future we might look at and say, okay, we know that those genetics are maybe a little more, uh, we watch out if we're under stress conditions with the T3 fungicide? Absolutely. So there is a gene in wheat that's used for leaf rust. It's called the LR34 gene, and that helps protect the plant against leaf rust. And what happens in those uh, plants or in those varieties with that gene or that genetics is we actually get that leaf tip necrosis which is a response from that leaf rust gene. Yep and so that happens just and worse under stress right? Absolutely. And so we saw certain genetics that have the LR34 gene they were more susceptible and in this more stressed areas so we get into the the areas where we were under temperature stress, we were under drought stress, heavy clay soils, and all of a sudden we've got this tremendous burn from the from the fungicide. But yes, it was burned from the fungicide, but we also we still saw some symptomology, correct? Even without the fungicide? Yes, yeah, so even in fields that didn't get the fungicide application, and again, those fields have been stressed. It's been very dry, very little rainfall in many areas, lots of warm temperatures, and so that crop was simply stressed. And so that's why we're seeing it with fungicide, without fungicide, but we are seeing it in certain varieties more than others, and that all is because of genetics. Yeah, so we have genetics, and we have stress, and we have the fungicide as another thing on top of that, that they put it all together and you go, oh my gosh, my, my beautiful wheat crop. You told me I've got so many heads per square foot. I got great yield potential. I just wiped it out, right? Or well, not necessarily. So yes, that fungicide impacted our flag leaf. We did see that necrosis. And so what happens is we don't necessarily get the benefit of the fungicide, but generally speaking, we've got a lot of heads in these fields and so yield potential in many of these fields is still really good. Yep and in terms of grain fill uh, temperatures? Yep so temperatures during grain fill period have actually been quite good. In the beginning of June we had some very very warm days but as we've progressed through June we've actually had a lot of cool nighttime temperatures. Temperatures below 10 degrees Celsius here in Ontario and so with that we've been able to really lengthen the grain fill period which giving us you know really good yield potential when we were able to uh, lengthen that grain fill period. So we spray the fungicide to make yield uh, maybe this year with the stress we were under some varieties we won't see that yield mm -hmm. increase but as far as yield potential 
May, it's going to be interesting to yes. see if the impact of more days of grain fill can trump the fact that we really did reduce the amount of photosynthetic area we had by burning off that flag leaf, right? Absolutely. And again, we've got lots of heads per square meters. Those are nice big heads. They're full of grain. So yield potential is still really optimal in my eyes. <laughs> yeah. And so moving forward, Joanna, just to wrap it up here, this was one of the things that everybody talked about at Diagnostic Days. It's a, it's a big issue. Next year, T3 fungicide, yes. T3 fungicide, no. Well, I would say absolutely. If fusarium is a risk, if we've got lots of moisture, lots of humidity, absolutely that T3 is so, so critical for managing against fusarium head blight. And again, this year we had a lot of dry, hot conditions that the wheat was dealing with. It was stressed. Adding that fungicide was just another layer of stress that we don't typically see. And it's only in these years where we might see something like that. So if we've got fusarium risk again next year, that T3 fungicide is going to absolutely be critical and not something that we should avoid. Yeah, and watch your other diseases. We're seeing leaf rust. We're seeing a bit of alternaria yeah. come in. Not and also the stay green effect, which this year didn't work. Oh, <laughs> didn't work this year, at least on some varieties. But wow, it's still lots of good reasons to at least think about and, and probably use that T3 fungicide. With that, Absolutely. Peter Johnson at Wheat Pete, realagriculture.com, Ontario Diagnostic Days, lots of fun. Come here, learn with us, and whatever you do, grow great wheat. <laughs>